from Thailand. Supervisor inside is Jack Rennie. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at Carrara and on the Gold Coast and viewers right around the world. It's time for the World Boxing Federation heavyweight title. Firstly, introducing in the red corner, weighing in at 127.85 kilograms, tonight's sporting white trunks, hailing from Magnolia, North Carolina. He comes to the ring tonight under the watchful eye of Mike Bevins and Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. He is a former WBA heavyweight champion. The only heavyweight champion to earn a college degree. He has first round knockouts of champions Mike Weaver and Tim Witherspoon. He also bossed a knockout over Englishman Frank Bruno. His record reads 59 fights, 43 victories, 31 wins by the way of knockout. He's also the first man to go the distance with Iron Mike Tyson. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing James Bonecrusher Smith. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing his opponent across the ring in the blue corner. Tonight, wearing black trunks, weighing in at 118.45 kilograms. Hailing from the Gold Coast, Australia. He is the former British, European and Commonwealth and PABA heavyweight champion. He was the youngest heavyweight to turn professional. He's been fighting in the professional ranks for over 20 years. At the age of 48, he has now had 81 fights, 67 victories, 44 wins by the way of fabulous knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, he went the distance with the great Muhammad Ali. He is the current Australian heavyweight champion, looking for the ultimate dream, Aze Joe Bradner. well and truly behind Joe Bugner would be a huge understatement Jeff and this would lift him even more I would imagine definitely so this is just what he needs you've been given your instructions let's now have a look at the tail of the tape of this WBF heavyweight title fight there it is Joe Bugner three years older the height about the same well Jeff it wouldn't be often that uh, Joe Bugner enters a fight the lighter of the two fighters and the reach advantage of slight one there to James Smith it's going to be a tremendous opening. Bonecrush is going to go for the knockout early. There it is. And there's that big right hand from James Bonecrusher Smith. And that is the punch he will be looking for early in this fight. Expect an explosive start to this contest. There's that right hand once again from Bonecrusher Smith. Joe will probably need to try and hold his man on the inside. Bone Crusher really telegraphing the blow. Go doing what he needs to do, and that's try and smother the blow. He's putting a lot behind the punches early, Matthew. He's going for the knockout. Well, Jeff, when he fought Tim Witherspoon, blew Witherspoon away in one round, who has a great chin himself. It was the right hand that brought about terrible Tim's downfall. That, of course, was way back in 1986. That's yeah. what Joe's going to do. Joe's going to jab. Smith nearly 10 kilos heavier than Bugner, so they're two very, very big men in there tonight for this vacant WBF heavyweight championship. Oh, Bonecrush was looking a little hurt there, a little stunned. And he's puffing very hard too, Bonecrush, let me tell you. I think Joe's going to be very careful for the first 20 seconds of each round. That's about it. Joe will look, use all of his ring, ring generalship. Digging to the body with the right hand. Joe's weathered the storm early. 
Wagner there doubling up with the jab to the body. No doubt here the crowd in the background stamping their feet for Joe Wagner. fighter able to get off on the inside the third man in the ring is Bruce McTavish the referee my first world title fight match against Satoshi Shingaki way back in 85 at the Horton Pavilion Another punch there from Buckner as both men hold on the inside Joe looks to be the fitter Matthew both have looks tired already so they're jabbing his way off the ropes. And Crusher once again looking for the right hand. Matthew, make no bones about it. There's going to be a knockout. I think it's going to be to Joe Bugner very, very shortly. Bo Crusher Smith looks totally exhausted. And there's the bell ending round this? number one. And Jeff Fennec has just said James Bone Crusher Smith already looking very fatigued. And it's only the end of the first round. Yeah, he looks to have a problem, but I'm not sure what it is. Look, look. He may have injured his right hand, which is his power punch. Or is it the shoulder, Jeff? Well, he looks like he has a problem. There is that short right hand there from Joe Button, which you seem to think may have stunned Bone Crusher. So standing up in his corner, so best showing way, his fitness. Best way to get your breathing, but is by standing up. Doing a George Foreman. Bone Crusher there wincing from pain. His corner trying to work on the right arm. But that is his power, power punch. Ready, let's go. It looks like timeout called by the referee. And what a disappointing end this would be. Doctor, come here. Come here. Doctor, doctor. The referee calling up the ringside position. Eddie Mustafa Hamid taking his man over to the doctor. I'm going to make the doctor make that if we can listen in he said his shoulders gone he wants to quit he wants to stop joe bugner will be winner go stay there man his right shoulder's gone he wants to quit i'm getting the doctor to rule well, jeff i can't say i've ever seen this before it looks like the yeah. right shoulder is in fact dislocated oh it don't look dislocated to me matthew it looks like he's exhausted <laughs> They did a lot of talking before this fight. And this is it. It's all over. Joe Bugner is the new WBF heavyweight champion. It's a first round TKO victory. But uh, Jeff, a very disappointing end to this fight. Well, Joe doesn't want to do. He weathered the storm very early. And uh, his shoulder looks... Something is wrong with him, Matthew. He's seen a lot of pain. But... Bone Crusher now lying down on the canvas. Oh, yeah. He's just joined us. It wasn't from a punch. He was wincing in pain there. Joe blowing some kisses to his wife, Marlene. There's the man who's now the new WBF heavyweight king. Hopefully we'll have an interview with both the gentlemen. victor and the defeated man, James Bone Crusher Smith, in just a moment. The American defender, Bone Crusher Smith, was unable to come out for the second round, which seems the winner of this contest and new WBF heavyweight champion of the world, Ozzy Joe Bone Cans and things getting shelter in the Yeah, we've just moment. got uh, hit with a projectile, just got uh, 
beer or something coming out of the top of his head. Just a bit of Bundy and rum. That's what we're going to have. Famous drink up here on the coast. If it's not blood. As the belt gets placed around. The crowd aren't too happy. Well, that's understandable. James Bonecrusher Smith came here. Talk the talk and basically walk the walk, Jeff. Let's just talk about heavyweight champion. Be congratulated by, Let's uh, go up to the interview with the, the new the WBF heavyweight champion, so, congratulations. Joe Bugner. Probably not ending the way you expected it to win, but congratulations. You are the heavyweight champion of the world for the WBF. I am, I am very, very sorry for my fans here. Because I think it's a fight. I'm just sad that Bone Crusher hurt his shoulder or whatever happened. But I tell you what, we are the first heavyweight champion of Australia ever. And I'm very proud of all of you for being here today. Thank you for coming. I'm very proud of all of you. Thank you. We're very proud of you too, Joe. Uh, just before you go, the first round, obviously, that's the only way we can gauge how this fight was going, but how did you think it was going? Well, James caught me with some real big over right handers, which did sort of sting me quite a bit because I wasn't prepared for that. I wanted to jab and move, but then I caught him with a very good body shot, and I think I may have caught him with a pretty good one to the head, Anyway, he couldn't carry on, so that was it. It was a big surprise for me because I really was prepared to go 12 rounds with him. Joe, you've got a capacity house here at Carrara. They're all behind you. Congratulations to you for being the new champion. Thank you very much, and I really want to sincerely mean this. I, I'm so proud of Austra to be an Australian that I want to dedicate this fight to my two sons who have come over from England for this special occasion, Joseph and James. He's the junior, that's why. So this fight is for my two sons. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Bone crusher. That way you expected. Your shoulder looked dreadful. Yeah, um, I threw it right out in the first round there. I hit Joe with some couple good shots on the, on the top. And I guess I just threw it out. So bone crusher, it came out while you were throwing a punch. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hit him good with it over the top. And uh, I'd love to come back and do a rematch maybe in October. Bone crusher Smith, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, the WBF world heavyweight champion of Australia and the world, Aussie Joe Wagner. <laughs> Firstly, facing us of the red corner, wearing the regular shorts trimmed with white. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled eight stones, 13 and a quarter pounds. He has an excellent record. 28 contests, 26 wins. 18 of those wins coming by way of knockouts with only two defeats. Tonight, he is the proud challenger from Puerto Escondido, Colombia, Walter Estrada. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing his familiar black colored shorts trimmed with gold. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled eight stones, 13 and a half pounds. He also has an outstanding record, 23 contests, 20 wins. 10 of those wins coming by way of knockouts, only two defeats and one draw. Coming to the ring as the former undefeated champion of Great Britain and the Commonwealth tonight, making the first defense of his championship, presenting from Canberra's land in Scotland, the two-time WBO featherweight champion of the world, Scott, the real McCoy Harrison. The referee, Mr. Rodriguez, will now give his final instructions. Tremendous rounds. reception for Harrison. Gentlemen. As warm as I've ever heard. Okay, gentlemen, friend. you got your instructions. I want you to obey my commands at all times, and I want you to protect yourself at all times. Now, good luck. Walter, te di las instrucciones. Quiero que obedezca mis instrucciones todo el tiempo y te proteja todo el tiempo. Suelte, shake them up. The impressive linguistic talents of referee Gino Rodriguez. Estrada, who comes from a little fishing village, population no more than three or four thousand, Puerto Escondido on the north coast of Colombia. But they've got a big gym there with 40 pros based there, including sometimes Arine Pacheco, one of the top flyweights in the world. Estrada can be a bit left arm 
happy, he's pretty rangy, almost lanky, you'd say. Harrison will have to get inside. Harrison says he's going to jump on him, but there might be dangers in that jump. Yeah, he'll have to just maybe sample the power on his arms and gloves before he takes any silly chances. Though, having said that, Harrison doesn't do anything silly. He's very controlled, good pressure fighter. You can see it already, he's just boxing his way in. He, he, he hasn't jumped on this guy the way he jumped on Medina. I think he was in a bad mood that night with something to prove, so at least he's paying him full respect here. Body shot getting in from Estrada. And a right to the body as well. Awkward style to work out by the look of it. Harrison's only seen bits and pieces of him on video, and of course he only knew about this opponent nine days ago. And remember, Estrada, even if he hasn't mixed in world class, does have 15 wins inside three rounds. Worth thinking about. Whether he can cope when the water's this deep, we'll see. I know I'm saying that uh, Estrada still has southpaws so for the same problems, but all southpaws are different, all have their own problems, and this fella throws punches from all over. So Scott will just have to keep tight as he's doing now. It's a confident start, this, from Estrada. He looks to have quite a fast left hand. That's the hand that's done most of the damage for him in the wins he's chalked up so far. He's got a couple of defeats on his record that don't read so well, though. One against a journeyman, Jose Portillo, another against a novice pro, Andres Ledesma. That was about two or three fights ago. That isn't such smart form. Scott finding it a little bit awkward to find the range, and that is normal against a southpaw. He just can't get himself into punching range. He's been caught with a couple of shots too. Nothing too dangerous or powerful, but good body shot. Trying to work out the style of it, Scott Harrison. And while he's doing that, Estrada is going for him with that left hand. It's an uncomfortable opening first round there. Harrison, quite easy to hit, being caught to head and body. That was a solid shot, the left hand. Harrison does have a good chin, but doesn't want to take too many of these. One or two alarming signs here for Harrison in this opening session. If they thought Estrada was going to be some kind of dummy coming in at late notice, maybe they're going to have to think again. He's got something, I think. Scott is pawing a little bit with the jab. He's going to have to snap in. This guy can throw the upper cut, which is probably the biggest danger to Scott Harrison because his chin's so low. Estrada in the first round here, far better than maybe we expected. Yeah. Can he sustain this? And I think he won the first round, the Colombian too. The nudging each other and pulling faces as if to say, hang on, what have we got here with this Colombian? Well, look at the left hand, straight through oh, Scott's no. gap. All through Scott's career, it has been a little bit easy to hit at times. That was one of the things we complained about, but normally he's throwing so many punches, you don't tend to notice it. But we certainly noticed it in the first round there. Estrada in the red trunks, the late substitute opponent, who for some reason has had world rankings as high as three with the WBA at super bantamweight, the weight below this. Although his camp insists he's always been a featherweight, so you can work that one out for yourself. Well, Harrison is trying to circle to his own left to get outside the jab. But the problem for Scott is that most of the problems he faced came from the left hand. But having said that, he's doing the right thing, moving away from that, trying to nullify the jab. Flower of Scotland rings around this Brayhead arena as if to try to lift Scott Harrison. He needs to get closer. I would have think the body attacks might be the answer for him, but at the moment he's getting picked off from long range by these siding shots from Estrada, who's really going for it with the left hand. For a moment, seemed a bit disconcerted himself, free with the head on the inside, yeah, well, Estrada. Bit, I was going to say careless, but I think that was a little bit more cynical than that, the Estrada with the head. Scott, finding the range now. Best punch yet from Harrison, that left hand. And this is a very gritty, hard man, Scott Harrison. Just uh, looking at the face of Estrada, I just wonder whether there's some damage. It's on the blind side from us at the moment. Yeah, there is a cut. Yeah, just a little neck, doesn't look much, but... Uh... I mean, Estrada can't complain too much. He was the one who was a little bit fancy with the forehead a second ago. Body shot from Harrison. He's starting to get in close. 
Estrada, by the way, was due to have fought tonight in Colombia, so he was fit and ready to go into action. Harris beginning to catch that left hand to the body a bit better now. I think his defences have tightened up slightly. I think he was surprised, probably shocked in the first round. Some of these punches straying a little bit low from Estrada as well. This is a bit better from Harrison, just beginning to get to grips with the problems being solved by the Colombian who gets it with a left hand and that rocked Harrison back momentarily. He looks very thoughtful after that. That's a couple of times Scott has been shaken, visibly shaken. And Estrada still looking perfectly at home, not really too much troubled at all. Well, it's a massive opportunity which has come out of nowhere for Estrada. So you can imagine his mentality going into this, he's right up for it. See, Estrada is doing an unusual thing for a South, but he's countering Scott's jab with his own left hand and Scott does not have the defence to cope with it. Most southpaws want to pull your jab and counter with their own jab. This fellow's countering with the left hand and it's giving Harrison all sorts of problems. It's not an easy style to cope with. He's quick as well, Estrada. It doesn't have to be the end, he's punch all the time. He can be in and out, in and out, in and out. Very cool and calm, Peter Harrison in the corner. This man knows what it's like to lose this title. He had a virus going in that night against Manuel Medina, lost the title, regained it from him, knocking Medina down four times and stopping him in 11 rounds in a great display. But this is another matter again. Of course, we've seen a Colombian late substitute come in before for this title years ago, Ruben Palacio. Remember him? He had 11 defeats on his record, dethroned Colin McMillan. I think one of the problems too for Harris, and his work is not flowing against this awkward south. I'm calling him awkward, and that's probably, I should be more complimentary. He knows exactly what he's doing. But Harrison's having to force the work, and that's going to take more steam out of him. He's really having to force himself to try and get some results here. He's going to have to be clever, I think, Scott Harrison. He's only fought three south pause, as far as we can tell, looking through his record, and none at this level. Patrick Mullins was one, Smith Adoon, who had Harrison on the floor, and John Matthews. Estrada with a little nick by the left eye, it's nothing much. He still has that confident look about his work. The face, dead pan, nothing that Scott has done so far has troubled him in the slightest. That left hand up the middle is still dangerous. And he has that scything left hand. You can see how he's finished off opponents at lower level, can't you? And the big problem is still for Harris, he, he cannot get himself into the end without taking shots. Eventually, he's just going to have to declare war on this fellow, but the fellow's got the power to trouble him, he's shaking him a couple of times. This is turning into, at this moment, a little bit of a disaster for Scott Harrison. He can't solve this fellow out. And what punches is he going to have to take on the way in if he does try to go to war with him? Yeah, and as I say, he's been shaken a couple of times already. He cannot solve out the southpaw jab. And the thing is, it's not the jab that's giving him most of the problems. It's the countering left hand right up through the middle. There was a low one there from Harrison. Keep them up, says the Chicago referee, Estrada. Is discomforted. I think Harrison will try anything he can to just dent this ring of confidence that Estrada carries with him at the moment. See, again, as I've said before, Scott is not the most difficult guy in the game to, to, to hit with punches. His head is always that little bit stationary. He's an aggressive type fighter, so if his attacks are not working, it doesn't have really a plan B. That's a bit better from Harrison as he gets in closer. I and think just it's too late in the round, Ian. Just for the first time, Estrada looked a bit disorganised. Some blood is smeared onto the forehead of Scott Harrison. I think Estrada's work in the first couple of minutes of this round is, is giving it to him on my card unless Harrison comes up with something dramatic here in the closing seconds. Look, looks frustrated, Harrison. Still trying to solve the puzzle of the style that's in front of him. Arena 
There's some drama here, quite a plot developing. Body shots landed, Estrada 21, Harrison 6 so far. You cannot get close without taking shots, and I tell you, these body shots are going to take a lot of steam out of Harrison. Nobody likes body shots, I'm sure Harrison doesn't like them. And these left hands are landing bang on the ribcage. You could say that maybe Harrison has got a share of one of these rounds so far, but my card has given all three to Estrada. Well, I've given Harrison a share of the second, the other two to Estrada. But the thing is, the lack of success Harrison is having, he just can't solve this fellow, he cannot get into range. Estrada seems to have the perfect antidote to everything that Scott tries. So when they picked this guy from the four they were looking at, did they make a mistake? early days that that's why they have title fights over 12 rounds and Harrison is an excellent 12 round fighter but I'm worried as I said earlier he's forcing his work so he's going to use up a lot more steam than when, when your work is flowing still missing still missing he's outreached as well that's a big big factor in this fight too plus the south four style plus that fast scything left hand there it is again and Harrison not much head movement pretty easy to hit with that and just a good measure, Estrada pits in another down, says that's better from Harrison. Another good left hand to take and return. So far, Harrison has looked frustrated and frankly ragged, but maybe he can turn it around. Well, I'm thinking Columbia must be a tough school because this guy's not even in the, the top three over there. And boy, you can certainly fight a bit of good right hand from Harrison. Maybe Harrison will start to get to him. There's another left sunk to the body from Estrada. Harrison has an answer this time and gets a little closer. Good footwork, getting himself into range. Estrada just seemed to be blinking uncomfortably there on the inside, I noticed. You would think eventually Harrison's strength would start coming into play, maybe from the halfway stage. But he already his face is fairly banged up from the punches he's taken. This is better. Harrison got in with the right hand. Estrada had success before it. Just momentarily now, now, now Harrison's starting to catch him. Is he weakening this Columbia? It's not a knockdown, but he has a more thoughtful look about him. Is he just starting to unravel here, Estrada? I fancy Harrison has just started to get to him in this round. He suddenly looks weaker and a lot less confident. Yeah, but he's still come back with a good left hand as Harrison moved him, but that was the little shining light that Harrison needed. Just give him one chance and he'll grab it with both hands. Distress signals coming from Estrada. Yep, there's a ragged look about him for the first time. And he goes down this time. Very quickly up, breakthrough for Harrison. He's had three and a half difficult rounds with this guy, but I think he's beginning to feel the strength now, and Estrada is giving out a lot of distress signals as he goes back to his corner. He's blinking away, looking at the canvas. Ian, if this was an old B-movie, I would start to wonder what the plot was here. There were no signs whatsoever that he should want out of this fight. He was doing well. He got pushed to the floor, he didn't get punched to the floor. Good body shot there, which may have sickened him a little bit. But I've never seen a man's attitude change so drastically in a fight. Unless he was caught by a shot on the inside that took more effect than we, than we thought at the time. But doing so well, I mean, it's only one punch. That was the good body shot. That was a bit of a sickener. But for heaven's sake, he's taking the count, he's expecting it back up. It's the way he was walking back to the corner, shaking his head as though he wants out of there. So this would be the perfect time for Scott Harrison to put his foot to the floor. Now he might really jump on Estrada. He might struggle now to keep the fight at range, where he looked pretty effective in the first three rounds. Was the minute long enough? Something seemed to go out of the Colombian halfway through that last round. And he's now reeling back on the back foot and shipping punches. Find some fire. But this looks different now. A lot different. And down goes Estrada again. 
The end could be near here. Gets up at nine. Doesn't look much like he really wants to go on, does he? The way he's staggering, he hasn't taken a solid headshot. That he wants over there, but he's having a go now at least. Tremendous toe to toe exchange, and Estrada came off worse. Harrison was accurate there, thumping home the hooks, siding punches. Down Estrada goes again, and it's called off in the fifth round. Scott Harrison retains his WBO featherweight championship. Blasting away Walter Estrada in the fifth. Well, it took him time to get going, but the end came relatively suddenly. Yeah, well, I mean, it's possible that body shot maybe took all the stuffing out of Estrada. It was a lovely shot, but I've never seen a fighter who's doing so well in a match crumble so suddenly from one particularly a body shot, not even a headshot, he just seemed to lose all desire, wanted out of there. Scott still has his title intact, but I think a lot of questions will have to be asked. That was not a good uh, Scott Harrison performance. He could not solve this guy out whatsoever. It wasn't a, really a conclusive finish. The guy seemed to collapse out of the fight. So Scott, we're seeing you're amongst the, the top four or five featherweights in the world. But that performance will not underline it any in my book. Scott, not one of your better performances, but thankfully you're still champion. Even bearing in mind he was having to fight a guy who's coming in at late notice about whom he knew very little. I don't expect Estrada was any more awkward than a Belgian would have been. So Scott seemed short of ideas, couldn't solve the fellow out. But this fellow just, he couldn't go with Scott. Scott is tremendously strong. You would expect this to happen in the second half of the fight. The sudden crumble probably took away the chance Scott had to, to put his mark on this fight. He struggled all the way through. The, the finish, I suppose, was conclusive enough, but uh, I think Scott would much rather have done it in a cleaner manner. The desire and self-belief suddenly went out of Walter Estrada in the fourth round, and the end came in the fifth. And Harrison now will look ahead. He do, does still have to defend against Avalian, who's his mandatory challenger. He's a Gary Shaw fighter. And uh, I think that fight will come off another southpaw, but a better southpaw than Estrada, who is, is his last desperate throw and was getting caught a lot. You knew the end was coming, didn't you, in the fifth? Yeah, you can see the look on his face. You, you can see he, he had enough, he wanted out of there. But uh, full credit to Scott, you give him one chance, you don't, you, he doesn't look for a second one, he takes it, and he didn't stop throwing punches. Scott Harrison, no nightmare tonight. This time he holds on to the crown and can look ahead to bigger things. He says he wants to unify the title against the big boys of the division, led by Manny Pacquiao now, who is due to fight Juan Manuel Marquez in May, though that's by no means a certainty. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and three seconds of round number five, referee Gino Rodriguez has called a halt to the contest. In his opinion, Estrada was in no position to continue. Your winner, and he is still the two-time WBO featherweight champion of the world from Cambersland in Scotland, Scott, the real McCoy, Harrison. A round of applause, please, for the game challenger, Walter Estrada. World Boxing Organization Supervisor Isvan Kovacs has presented the championship belt to the winner, Scott Harrison. Through all the disruptions in the build-up to the fight, that's what it was all about, retaining his title belt, and he has done that. And one has to also point out that he got a fantastic reception from the Scottish crowd on his way into the ring tonight. And despite the questions raised during the performance, he's getting a fantastic reception, having won. But there are questions.
and we'll be addressing them shortly. Lots of action still to come from here in Glasgow, featuring a couple of the young Scots trying to break through. Well to wait Gary Young tonight in action against Anthony Christopher and Willie Lemons up at lightweight tonight against David Carlin. All that action still to come. But here comes the champion, flying the flag for Scotland again, and Ian is going to have a word with him now. Well done, Scott. You've held on to the title, but for three rounds there, it looked like he was giving you one or two problems. Uh, it wasn't giving his problems, you know. Uh, I think I had about four, four days notice for, it, for, this fight, for this opponent. So I didn't know what to train for as well near, near the tee. But, uh, he could punch it, but with a good stoppage record, so I had to be wary of that. And it was a good fight, it was good to watch. And he was taller than you and had a fast, quite powerful left hand by the look. But he seemed to rock you in the second, that right? No, he didn't, he didn't rock you, no, maybe caught his a punch, I need to go and see the tape. But uh, as I say, he can punch a bit, and uh, it was good to get that one out of the road because I thought I was fighting the, uh, the man who was the challenger. But, uh, but I don't know if that fight's going to harm, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, against Abu Yan, we'll, we'll find out about that. You seem to get to him in the fourth round, all the belief and desire suddenly seem to go out of him. What do you think caused that? I think uh, round by round, I, I felt him weakening. Every round he was weakening a wee bit, you know. The legs were weakening, his punches were weakening. It didn't have that much snapping him. And before rounds, it was just, I felt as if he wasn't.